I, I know that I loved theatre, but I was really open to all of it. I remember someone coming into drama school to like to just talk to us as final year students and saying, your first couple of years out of here, take whatever comes in your direction. Don't be picky. Don't be this. Don't be that. Just Good take advice. what comes. And and it's exactly what I did. And I learned, you know, that I enjoy, you know, working on camera. I, I enjoy being on set. Um, and I still love going to the theatre and I still love being part of a play and um, as the years have gone on, you know, I've done probably three professional plays in 20, nearly 25 years. Wow. And the rest of it has been camera work. Um, and that's not necessarily by choice, because one thing I do know is that I will always go back to the theatre. I'm, I'm at a stage now where I'm like plotting when that's going to happen next. But for me as an actor, I kind of feel... Like theatre is like rehab for acting when you've done a lot of work on set and not on screen. Um, you, you, you know, things like the rehearsal room and that space for like four weeks, it feels like a gift these days because you have zero rehearsal time when you're, when you're, certainly when you're doing a TV show, you really, you rehearse on the day and then, you, you know, for like 20 minutes and then you show it to a crew and yeah. it's like, this is how we're doing it. And yeah. you have to have made a lot of choices and decisions and things before you've even got there. Whereas that exploratory sort of, you know, going into the rehearsal room, finding things, trying things out, building it all from the ground up and then presenting it. Um, and then having the immediate audience, you know, gratification. If you're in a comedy, getting a laugh, it's like the biggest thing yeah, in the world. And I love that side of it, absolutely. But then you, I remember the grind. I remember like doing the eight shows a week and, you know, you're in a theatre production, you're like, Jesus, how long have we got left? Another six yeah, weeks of this. How am I going to do that? Thing, day in, day out. Um, yeah, yeah. So, you know, you know like, like every actor, never pleased, never yeah. happy, <laughs> never, never fully satisfied. Yeah. But I love all of it. And I'm glad that I started in the theatre. Yeah, that's good. Anybody you worked with or went to school with, um, have they had success? Oh, sure. I mean, my best friend at drama, or one of, I had sort of a circle of very tight friends at drama school, um, but one of them was James McAvoy. Oh, wow. I uh, don't know if you've heard of him. But yes, he's very I've heard of James McAvoy. <laughs> and we're still, you know, really good mates. We don't see each other as much as we used to because, you know, we live in different sides of the but world. You but you acted with him on stage. Oh, yeah. I did my first ever professional gig with James, which was a panto, a pantomime, sorry, in uh, in Kirkcaldy, in Faith, in Scotland. Uh, it was our final year of drama school, and the drama school were doing a pantomime, because that's a big thing in the UK. Um, and But they said to any final year students, if you want to audition for any professional pantos, you're allowed to do that. So James and I both auditioned for this panto, Beauty and the Beast, and we both got it. And so, and we, it was a musical. It was musical. Pantos have always got music in them. Yeah, pantos. Yeah, I, yeah, I didn't know. That. And uh, and they've always got like <laughs> they've always, they've always got like stock characters in them. Whatever the story is that year, where well, it's always a fairy tale. But there's always like um, the dame, which is a man dressed as a woman. Uh, there's always the lead. Uh, the I think the lead boy, which is always a woman dressed as a man. <laughs> and then there's always a character, which we would call the Buttons character, because that's a character from Cinderella, but the kind of like the sidekick, who's, who would always like get the audience going, because there's always direct address to the audience and stuff. Um, it's a very interactive experience. And James was that character. He played Bobby Buckfast. <laughs> and I played <laughs> the Beast and the Prince. <laughs> so do you still remember the, the songs, the music, all that? I mean, yeah, there were songs that were taken. The, the, what normally happens in Panto is they take relevant pop songs and they change the lyrics of them. Uh, or they take songs from musicals and change the lyrics. Like of them. what? Give me an example. Well, I, you don't have to sing, but you can. No, no I mean, um, If I Were a Bell, which is from, oh, I can't remember that which musical that's from originally, but that was in R1. I remember my song that I had to do was A, ch um, a House Is Not a Home, A Chair Is Still a Chair, Burt Bacharach. House is not a home, is that right? A chair is still a chair, even if there's no one sitting there. That's amazing. Um, and yeah, so weird. It's Did weird you always have that like ear for like being on key? Is that something that you're born with? Because I, I, I a lot of times I have a band and sons been, and you know I'll, I'll say you know uh, a home is not a home, and my Rob will go off key smile <laughs> smile when you're saying 